All right, good morning, good morning everybody. Uh, just one more minute and we'll get it kicked off. Actually, it's 8.02. Um, Kevin, let's, uh, let's get going here. I've got a, you know, in terms of the agenda, we've got two things that we wanna do this morning. We've got, first of all, we've got Kevin uh, from Thai KV who's gonna be presenting. Uh, and then we've also got the follow-up item of the KubeCon sessions. So the, it's getting kind of hot and heavy on getting those done. And uh, so we're going to make sure that everybody signed up and, um, and we set up some, some groups to start collaborating. Uh, I think that the, the next session that we do in two weeks leading up to KubeCon is going to be dedicated to just reviewing the sessions and collaborating a bit more on them together. Uh, so don't expect a, a presenter next week. Cool. Sounds good. Should we? Should I just uh, get started then? Clint, are you there? Did Clint drop off? Oh, sorry about that. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can. I can. Uh, so I was just doing the kind of the intro agenda. I don't know what, what actually came across because it looks like my Wi-Fi was flaky. Did you guys hear the intro or did you miss all that? I heard it all. What was that? I heard it all. Okay, great. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and kick it off. You got about uh, 30 minutes and then we got to get to the next agenda item. Okay, sounds good. Uh, thank you, Clint. Uh, so uh, my name is Kevin Shu. Uh, I'm from the company PinCap. Uh, I'm the company is a head of US strategy and operations. And um, both myself and Ed Huang, who is our co-founder and CTO, uh, will be doing this presentation and taking your questions afterwards about Thai KV. Ed is actually dialing in from Beijing. I think it's like 11 p.m. over there. Ed, you want to say hi real quick to everybody? Hi, hi, or yeah. Okay. <laughs> hi from Hello. Beijing. Great. All right. So uh, I will just launch into Thai KV, which is an open source distributed transactional key value store. Uh, this is, again, one of the projects that PinCap, the company, is making right now. And uh, let's get started. All right. So a quick agenda to uh, our presentation today before uh, we dive into the whole thing. We'll do a really quick history of the company and the product, a pretty detailed technical walkthrough of Thai KV. Uh, I will also do a quick use case summary uh, by one of our largest adopters, a company called uh, Ulama, which is uh, literally means, are you hungry in Chinese? And it's actually one of the largest food delivery platforms in China. Uh, they were recently in the news for being purchased by Alibaba for $9.5 billion or something like that. And they exclusively use Thai KV to uh, handle their storage. And I will also do a quick demo of how Thai KV works inside the whole Thai DB ecosystem. And then both Ed and I will take your questions. And I know these like Zoom signals get dropped off pretty frequently. So if at any point I start trailing off and you start missing what I'm saying, please just uh, shout at me and I'm happy to rewind and restart. All right. So quick history about the company. It was founded in April 2015 by three infrastructure engineers, Ed being one of them, Max and Dylan being the other two. And uh, we built a ThaiDB platform. Thai just stands for titanium. There are a few main components in the ThaiDB platform. One is ThaiDB itself, which is a stateless SQL layer that is compatible with MySQL protocol. Uh, the other one, of course, is the focus of this presentation, which is Thai KV. Uh, you know, Thai key value essentially is what it stands for. It's a distributed transactional key value store. We also have a project called Thai Spark, which is a Spark plugin that allows a lot of our users to run more complex uh, OLAP queries directly on top of Thai KV. And another component is called Placement Driver, which is kind of this meta store uh, component cluster that does a lot of the auto scheduling as well as uh, load balancing and works very closely with Thai KV. And everything that we have been doing so far was open source from day one. Uh, we open sourced Thai KV on April 1st, 2016. And the whole project's current version is at 2.0 RC4. Uh, since we did start open source from day one, we've been very well received and pretty popular in the community. Uh, the ThaiDB uh, repo itself is more than 12,000 stars. 
Tag KV itself is closing in on 3,000 stars. We also have uh, quite a few contributors, uh, not just folks who are working for us, but people from really all over the world. Uh, there are also a few, I would call them institutional contributors that I want to highlight real quick. Uh, companies like Samsung, uh, like Tencent Cloud, which is one of the larger cloud providers in China. Uh, also, Ulama, uh, the use case that I'll be highlighting, is contributing to uh, you know, the Tai KB project as well as companies like Mobike, which is one of the largest bike sharing companies, and also Total.com, which is a popular news aggregator uh, app in China. And of course, we are popular, I think, because we are trying to solve a pretty pressing pain point that a lot of organizations and companies are looking for as we accumulate just more and more data. Doesn't really matter if you're strictly in tech or not. Um, all of our lives are getting digitized every single day and companies and organizations need a unifying distributed storage layer that can support really key features like strong consistency, asset compliance, easy horizontal scalability that can theoretically go into infinity, and also, of course, a cloud-native architecture as more and more organizations are moving into that direction. And of course, hopefully, it's open source as well. So we actually got our initial inspiration from Google Spanner, the Spanner paper, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, unfortunately, Spanner was not open source and still isn't open source, but uh, TaiKV is. And we, re we really imagined and designed TaiKV to be, be a fundamental building block that could simplify building other systems, more interesting, useful systems on top of it. And so far, we've built TaiDB and TaiSpark ourselves. And Total.com, which is this news aggregator app again, that's actually valued at $20 billion in China. So I probably shouldn't call them a startup anymore. Uh, they use uh, TaiKV as their metadata service for their own kind of S3 architecture. And Olama, which I'll go into a little bit later on, made their own Redis protocol layer. But essentially, with Tai KV being the building block, we really do think uh, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can build on top of it. So a quick overview to how Tai KV looks inside just the Tai DB ecosystem. As you can see, it's quite literally uh, the center of the entire ecosystem. You had Tai DB on the left, that again is the stateless SQL layer that can talk directly to Tai KV, which is where the data is actually stored. And you have Spark on the right that does the OLAP query leveraging Spark that also talks to TaiKV directly where the data is stored. And TaiKV works with what we call placement driver cluster to do a lot of the metadata uh, shuffling and organizing. Now let's dive deeper into the TaiKV architecture. Uh, we've always imagined it to be a standalone distributed key value store. Uh, so right now, uh, any client really can use gRPC to directly connect and communicate with Thai KV clusters. gRPC, of course, is a CNCF project, uh, so we are heavy users of that. Uh, it has two APIs on the top. One is a transactional KV API. Another one is a coprocessor API that we've designed to do a lot of push down, to push down SQL logic into the Thai KV instances to be processed. Uh, we also apply uh, the RAF consensus protocol to do our replication to provide strong consistency as well as a high availability. And underneath each Thai KV instance, you can imagine every single one of them essentially also have its own RocksDB instance that takes care of the storage. And this is just one example of how we build TaiDB on top of TaiKV, TaiDB being the MySQL compatible SQL layer. Uh, but you can really plug in all kinds of different ORMs or other database connectors onto it. And if you see the little color blocks in the TaiKV nodes, uh, those blocks are essentially uh, different raft groups and uh, we've chunked them into what we call region, which is a concept that I will uh, probably mention a few more times later in the presentation. And each color 
If you're, they're the same color, whether it's light blue or green, they are the same RAF group distributed among uh, multiple Thai KV nodes. And that's how it works. And it's, as you can see, they're quite balanced. And that is actually done dynamically by Thai KV. And I will talk about that a little bit later as well. And here is another example, a distributed uh, object storage uh, use case where Thai KV becomes the metadata service for a set of blob storage uh, instances. And in this case, Thai KV is essentially kind of like a giant map where they can map blobs directly to their appropriate or uh, you know the connected blob storage instances. Uh, and this is actually how Total.com is uh, using Thai KV for their own metadata. Again, Raft is uh, in play as well. So a quick summary of the technical highlights of Thai KV. So as I mentioned, it does uh, scheduling and auto balancing, working with uh, the placement driver cluster. It has this multi raft implementation, multiple raft groups inside one Thai KV instance. Uh, it also does dynamically uh, range-based partitioning using splitting and merging. And this is how we resolve uh, hotspot issues. And I'll go into that in a little bit as well. Uh, as a transaction, of course, we use a two-phase commit with optimistic lock. And the whole project, for those of you who are curious, is written in Rust. So uh, no garbage collection stop time as well as runtime cost either. And this is a, a set of benchmarks, uh, the YCSV benchmark that we literally ran last night uh, for the purpose of this presentation. So you guys are the first ones to see this result. It's very fresh off the press. Uh, this, this is the environment and the uh, hardware that we use to run this particular benchmark test. And as you can see, both the insert TPS and the reQPS uh, operations per seconds are all both quite good. And one thing I want to mention for this test, too, is that we use the standard uh, three Thai KV node deployment. It's kind of like our default. Um, but, uh, you know, in any large in production setting, usually you have many, many more Thai KV nodes distributed to handle workloads. So the performance in a real world setting uh, should probably be even better than this. And this is a brief comparison between Thai KV with other uh, popular NoSQL databases that are out there. Um, I, I know Mongo announced that they're going to be asset compliant as well, but the thing is still in beta, so no, no one's really sure yet if it is. So I'm giving them a maybe on that for now. And this is a quick graph that explains how we do uh, split and merge dynamically. So again, this is one of the features where uh, Thai KV working with uh, the placement driver can do this dynamically. And kind of the metrics that we use or the configuration we use to do splitting uh, is if a region size exceeds 96 megabytes, which is our default value, of course, this is something you can change, uh, you know, depending on your needs. Then a split will happen to avoid a, a region being too large uh, or forming potential hotspots down the line. And for merging, it kind of works the same way. If a region is less than 10 megabytes, again, a configuration you can change yourself, then we will find an adjacent region and merge them to, uh, you know, bring the system to become more efficient. And in terms of how we do dynamic hotspot scheduling, uh, you can see these two nodes, one workload is going directly, or actually all the workload is going directly to one machine while the other machine is not uh, doing a whole lot. And the blue blocks here denote the leader node or the leader uh, element of a given RAF group, uh, which is of course the element that serves up all the data to the application. So all one machine is getting out of the work, the other one is not doing much, and we have a dynamic system where we can do RAF leader transfer uh, almost automatically, so that now in the resulting setup, uh, we've essentially switched the leader from one machine to another for region B, and now the workload is uh, more balanced and the hotspot is avoided. 
And of course, we've always uh, designed HiKB to be cloud native from day one, to have it work very well with the uh, Kubernetes ecosystem for it to be easily deployed on all the public cloud vendors as well as private cloud setting as well. Right now, the product is on Tencent Cloud and uCloud, which are two of the larger uh, cloud vendors in China. And we are working on our AWS integration right now. And we will move slowly but surely onto all the other cloud vendors as well. So our local deployment is containerized uh, using Docker Compose. And I will actually demonstrate that in a little bit near the end of the the presentation, and we are working on our Kubernetes integration with a thing called TiDB operator that we are working on right now. And we use a lot of other cloud native projects, uh, as so many of them are hosted on CNCF to help uh, you know, boost the performance and also the user experience of the entire TiKV deployment. So we use Prometheus, gRPC, like I mentioned, etcd, Grafana, uh, we are actually uh, the maintainer of uh, Prometheus and gRPC implement implementation in Rust. So we have contributed that implementation back to the community as well and are very actively developing those two things. So with all this blah, 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 you know, you might be wondering who is actually using this thing. Uh, it turns out quite a few companies right now have already deployed uh, TiKV in production. Uh, we released this uh, thing, you know, as our 1.0 only last October of, so October of 2017. So it's only been about uh, six to seven months. And in the APAC region is already getting a lot of adoption. More than 40 companies are using this in production, either uh, TIKV by itself or along with other components of the TIDD platform. And the industries range from, like I said, food delivery to e-commerce to live streaming to media to fintech to all kinds of different companies. Um, and of course, bikeless sharing and things like that. So now I will do a really quick dive into how Ulema uses TaiKV. So like I mentioned, it's a food delivery platform, kind of similar to your DoorDash or your Postmates. Uh, Quarba Alibaba is currently serving about 260 million users. And the bulk of his data is in key value format. And before they adopted TaiKV, they just used a hodgepodge of solution from Mongo to Cassandra to you know, MySQL, Redis, and so on and so forth to, made it, to make it work. But they were looking for a single unifying storage layer. So they tested out TaiKV, and uh, right now they've deployed TaiKV in you know, 10 plus clusters spread out in four different data centers, more than 100 nodes. Uh, you know, more than 10 dB, TB worth of data is in their Thai DB clusters right now, uh, serving about 80% of their platform's traffic, which is quite a lot. And the most interesting thing, of course, uh, that we thought was really cool was that they built their own Redis proxy on top of Thai KB because that's what they needed. And that really showed uh, the versatility of Thai KB as a standalone project uh, where you can build really whatever you need on top of it if you need a distributed key value store. And the performance uh, metrics here is one of the things that they uh, decided to release as the performance metrics when they were uh, testing one of their services on TaiKV that uh, we want to share with you guys as well. So with that said, uh, I'm going to do a really quick demo to kind of show you how TaiKV works in action. Uh, I did make my tribute to the demo god this morning, so hopefully uh, everything will go smoothly. And to give a quick context to this demo, so what I will do is launch a TiDB cluster and uh, kind of show you how that works, which is very simple using Docker Compose, and then also launch a MySQL instance and a Spark or a TySpark SQL instance uh, on top of uh, this cluster that is, of course, undergirded by TaiKV. And we will just do some real-time analytical queries on top of it to see how it enables kind of this hybrid, uh, you know, real-time data, uh, data warehouse uh, experience. All right. 
So I've already get cloned our uh, Docker Compose. What the heck? So let's just launch this thing. So ba 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 ba. Everything is done. And before we write some queries, I want to show you guys a couple of things that are really cool. Uh, one is we def we use Grafana as the the monitoring service for a TypeDB cluster. So we've defaulted that to port 3000. And the uh, admin, the username and password for this is just admin admin, very secure. And here you can see how you can monitor a TypeDB cluster. So you go to the overview, not really that interesting because nothing's really happening. But uh, if you go to TypeKB, you can check out the cluster. You can see the available size, the storage size, the capacity, all things like that. You can also look at the placement driver cluster to see what's going on with the entire cluster. Again, not a whole lot is happening, but uh, you can definitely play around with this. I play around with this all day. Uh, so it's really fun. In this case, uh, sorry to interrupt, you're just deployed on your local machine? Yes, and this is just deployed onto my local machine. So, uh, you know, that whatever the, the numbers here uh, probably corresponds to that. And another cool tool that I'll show you real quick, this is something we made ourselves, uh, is a visualization tool of the whole cluster. So that's defaulted onto uh, port 8010. This is thing called TyDB Vision. See if it works, okay. So this is, you can see basically the three Thai KV clusters. Right now, again, it's mostly empty. But if we look a little bit deeper into it, you can see these gray blocks essentially being, um, uh, these are the raft region follower nodes. And then the green, the dark green ones are the leader nodes. And once there's more interesting stuff going on, there will actually be lines kind of going back and forth between these nodes to denote uh, kind of the communications between them. So again, something that I find rather mesmerizing. So I play with it all day. So you guys can do that as well. All right. So going back to terminal, we've launched our TyDB uh, cluster locally on my laptop. So now I am going to first uh, get Spark going. So let me just do a few commands here. Let's do JVM, data, Spark, bin, and then we will launch our Spark shell. So we'll give that a minute. And we will also launch MySQL. And again, all this instruction and, and commands we have on our GitHub, and I'll share that link with you afterwards as well. So we launch MySQL. And as you can see, uh, it's directly connected to the current version of TyDB that I just uh, cloned onto my local machine. Uh, TyDB as a whole can essentially right now serve as MySQL slaves. So you can keep on writing your MySQL code however you want and enjoy the scalability that TyDB brings to you underneath it. Let's see if, okay, so Spark is up and running. So now I just need to import TySpark, which is a plugin that we made for, to leverage Spark on top of TyKV. All right. And the table or the data, the sample data that we'll be playing around with is in this thing right now. So let me just show you what is are the databases in here. So we will be playing around with this TC, TPCH001 database, which is just like a set of sample data that we play around with. Uh, so if we do actually do use TPCH001, so now we're using that. Let's bind that with our tie. Spark instance as well. All right, so that's good. So now both of these instances, TypeSpark and MySQL should be seeing the same data. So let's see what the tables are. So there are a bunch of tables in here. One of them is called nation. Uh, let's just see what's in there. So select uh, nation and you see a giant list of countries with some comments and things like that. And let's see if the Spark side sees the same thing. So let's do Spark SQL select um, nation. 
show. Let's do the first 20. And you see the same list of countries, all right? And we can actually, of course, run any level of complexity of queries in here. I have one teed up here that is particularly gnarly with um, a few group buys and order buys and conditionals in here on the MySQL side. Uh, this is coming from the line item uh, table. So this will give us some kind of data. And let's make sure that the Spark side sees the same thing. So this is the type Spark equivalent of that. Okay, we'll do that. This might take a couple of seconds extra. So you see the same data here, over here, just formatted a little bit differently, okay? Now let's say we wanna change something on this data set. Again, this data is all stored in TyKV nodes, right? So let's do like an update of the nation database set. Uh, let's do the n nation key, n nation key equals uh, one, one, two, two, two. And who do we pick on today? Uh, so from, oh sorry, where nation equals, who's the two, two, two? Brazil, all right, so let's change Brazil from two to two to two. Oops, I think I made a mistake there. Sorry about that, oh, that's, that's how I should call it. end name. So not nation, end name Brazil, all right. So if we do select star from nation again, Brazil is now changed to 222. Two, two. Now let's see if the Spark size sees the same thing. So Spark SQL select star from nation show 20. And voila, Brazil is also 222 because they're drawing from the same data source and you can do basically simultaneously transaction and analytical processing on the same live data set enabled by TyKB. All right, so that is my demo and to just wrap things up real quick. Again, uh, we always wanted TyKB to be on its own. That's why we are presenting this project to uh, CNCF for your consideration to potentially host it as an incubating project to really make it on its own. Uh, right now it has more than 40 in production deployments already and probably more coming down the pipe. And with this contribution, we really hope that it could not just be on its own, but have more and more features that we know the community wants and a lot of our uh, adopters want in the future like drivers for other languages. Right now, we only have a Go client for TyDB and a Java client for TySpark. But, you know, Elema has already made a uh, proxy for Redis, but uh, maybe they'll open source that in the future. Who knows? Uh, we want column family support that already started on this most recent pull request, but is, of course, very far away from being finished. And other useful features, as well as even more program paradigm support beyond key value. All right, with that, thank you again for giving us the opportunity to talk about you uh, KV. Contact us, either Ed or myself, anytime. And of course, happy to take your questions right now. Kevin, definitely a uh, fantastic job on putting that together. Thank you for, for presenting. Of course. Had any, uh, any questions out there for Kevin? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, very nice demo, uh, nice talk. So you had a slide that uh, mentioned um, you're using etcd and um, etcd itself is a distributed key value store. It has support for transactions. It's based on Raft and gRPC. How are you using etcd and um, what else you're doing on top of etcd? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, uh, this is Ed. Uh, I'm, I'm the, the, the CTO of PinCap and uh, we use etcd as the uh, embedded um, metadata store in placement driver because you know ETCD is not scalable it is it's only one raft group uh, in one ETCD deployment but TyKV is a uh, uh, use a multi raft model so we uh, store the metadata and the placement info to placement driver which 
is stored in embedded ATCD. So we use ATCD inside TechAV. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Kevin, <clears throat> what, what's the uh, predominant way that uh, TechAV is being deployed today? Right. Is it, is it just normal you know, deployment to an OS? Is it on top of Kubernetes? Like, what are you guys seeing right now? So right now, the, the in-production uh, deployment tools that we're using is a uh, Ansible uh, deployment, which can be used on really any cloud uh, service, whether you know, it's Tencent Cloud or AWS over here. And we are still working towards having TyKV deployment be fully, fully integrated with uh, you know, the entire tool set that's available in Kubernetes. So the TyDB operator that I mentioned is one of those projects that we're working on right now. And uh, you know, hopefully, if, if this project were to be accepted, then you know, that could be accelerated as well. So we're definitely looking to uh, get that going uh, as soon as possible. How are you thinking about that operator? Like, what, what's the scope of that in terms of the quote unquote like day two operations? Because I, I can see it being beneficial for getting it up and running and just replacing Ansible for day one. But are, are you guys thinking about the scale out capabilities of the database and, and leveraging the operator to do more than just day one activities? Ed, do you want to take that? I think you're more familiar with uh, operators. Operator, okay. Um, yeah, the, the, the whole idea of TyDB operator uh, is from ATCD operator. Uh, it just handled the uh, deployment, uh, scale out, and out to failover uh, for the whole TyDB project, not only for the, uh, not only for the TyKV part. Uh, but that, uh, it is on our plan to you know, act, extract the, the, the uh, deployment, uh, TyKV deployment uh, operational knowledge to another operator project. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like uh, ETCD operator, uh, the, the TyDB version of ETCD operator. But it is uh, not open sourced yet. Uh, we are uh, working on it uh, now, but maybe in the future we, we will open source it. Yeah. I had a quick question. Um, it's Quinton here. Um, could you speak a little about the, the differences or just comparison against CockroachDB, which appears to be superficially at least quite similar in goals and uh, aspirations. Right. Um, I have a couple points on that. And, you know, Ed, you can chime in and uh, fill that and fill in more details as well. So okay. at least in terms of the architecture of CockroachDB compared to what we have made here, um, you know, TyKB, our key value part is completely separate and therefore can be uh, you know, moved around and pluggable from different uh, systems on top, right? Which is kind of this larger point that uh, we hopefully we made uh, during this presentation. While uh, to my knowledge, everything that Cockroach does is in one uh, deployment. Uh, and you know, there are advantages to that, the advantages to the way we're doing it. Uh, we think the way we're doing it to have TyKV separate is more uh, scalable, is more flexible. And it's even easier to debug if you are an administrator of this system for a given company. And the use case that we are hitting right now in terms of our in-production uh, you know, use case for our customers is actually this hybrid transactional analytical processing database experience to give, to give people this experience of a real-time uh, analytics support which uh, I don't think CockroachDB does. Uh, they are still more strictly a uh, OLTP uh, scalable solution uh, to my knowledge. Uh, so, you know, I think we both drew our inspiration from the Google Spanner paper back in the days, but we definitely have a lot of uh, differences between us. And, you know, there's like this more superficial compatibility. Uh, you know, we are compatible with MySQL and Cockroach is uh, compatible with Postgres. So, you know, different people kind of use us in different ways. Uh, I don't know, Ed, if you have anything to add to that. Um, yeah, it's good. But, uh, and on the other hand, we, we share a different transaction model with Cockroach DB. The, uh, the whole asset the transaction implementation uh, is different from the Cockroach DB. Uh, but, uh, but in the user, user side, uh, just, just like Kevin said, yeah. Thanks, that's a great answer, thank you. Thank you.
All right, fantastic. Uh, I think we got maybe one more minute for questions for Kevin and team. Anyone else have any questions? All right, Kevin, thank you for, for presenting. Um, Ed, thanks for answering questions. That was a, uh, a great summary and overview of uh, Thai KV. Really cool stuff. All right, thank you so much for having us, Clint. Really appreciate it. All right, everybody. So on to the, the next topic. Uh, so we've got KubeCon uh, coming up pretty quick. We've got our two confirmed sessions for KubeCon. So the first is a introduction session uh, from the SWG. And then the second is a more advanced session. In previous meetings that we've had, we decided on uh, topics for each of the sessions. The first topic that we have in the intro session is covering the, the landscape that the team has kind of worked on over the past year. And, and we haven't you know, readdressed it in the last six months because we've just been reviewing different projects in the ecosystem. But I think we want to touch a little bit on that landscape in terms of storage and, and what we're seeing. And you know, we, you know, what are the high level like categories that we can kind of fit some of these projects that, that we've been hearing about into. And then we wanted to open that up to a, uh, a panel discussion uh, after that. So that's the, the intro session that we're trying to plan. And then there's an advanced session where we've, been, we've asked the, the TOC to, to give us feedback on you know, what they want from us. So what's, what's, a defini what's essentially the definition of, of cloud native? How does storage fit into that? And what does the TOC need from the SWG? Uh, you know, what's that charter gonna be for us for the next six months or, or, or whatever they really want from us? And um, so two, two sessions. The first session is, is what I'd like to get uh, people uh, together to, to plan. In, in previous meetings, we had uh, five folks that, that signed up to be a part of those planning sessions. So Saad, I think you stepped up, or it, uh, Ben Hindman and Steve uh, from Red Hat. Is there anybody else on this call that would like to uh, help us out in creating the, set, the intro session for KubeCon and be a part of that? Quinn, I think I saw your uh, your name pop up on the, the intro. Are you are you actively planning to be a part of that session? Yes. Sorry, I was I was struggling to find the unmute button. Yes, uh, I would I would uh, be happy to uh, help you guys if you need help and uh, contribute where necessary. Okay. I'd uh, also be interested in helping out. Jesse Brown. Is that right? Hey, hey, Clint, it's Alex. I'm I'm happy to help too. Great. Okay, so lots of folks. It looks like we got uh, seven or eight. Um, so I, I think that the next step here is to send out a, uh, an, in, an invite, but a, a poll to get some available times for everybody over the next uh, two weeks. Uh, I feel like we've got probably a, a couple to a few sessions that we'll try to organize between us and, uh, and we'll make some progress on putting together you know, a handful of slides for that intro and then figure out who can uh, be on that panel. So, uh, any, any comments or concerns about that or, or anybody have any other ideas for what we may need to do to prepare? Okay, cool. All right, so intro session looks like we're covered. Uh, I think that the next uh, SWG meeting that we have in two weeks, uh, hopefully we can have made enough progress there to, to discuss it with the team. Sorry about the background noise. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. And then following that is gonna be the KubeCon for the session. I don't have anything else on the agenda today to discuss. Does anybody wanna uh, bring anything up to chat about? Um, for that second session, uh, do we have folks from the TOC confirmed yet? I have not gotten the TOC folks to, to confirm. Uh, so I'm going to reach out to them again. Uh, in the background, what's been happening is that uh, Camille's been talking with folks on the SWG about what they are interested in and, uh, or, or, you know, back how the SWG is doing and what they want to see it turn into, et cetera. And so we're hoping to get feedback from Camille on that. So I think at a minimum, we'd have Camille talking to us and hopefully other folks in the TOC. So I'll, uh, I'll update everybody on the status of that. And if we need to adjust plans, then I'll, uh, I'll make sure I send out a message to the group on that. Cool, sounds good, thanks. <laughs> all right, folks. Uh, so we'll give you guys back about 20 minutes in your day. Thank you all for, uh, for making it. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks, everyone. <clears throat>
great demo, by the way.